Hey guys, Auto Fanatic. Uh, this morning, I'm going to be installing a set of Maxim Motorsports caster and camber plates on a 2016 Mustang GT Premium California Special. Uh, these are the plates. These things are awesome. I've used these things many, many times, and they make uh, doing your alignment so much easier. Instead of notching the lower strut body where it goes into the upright spindle. This just makes your alignment so much easier than using camber bolts and uh, notching the strut bodies. So the car we're working on today has the Ford Performance Complete Sports Suspension, which is shocks, springs, sway bars, and uh, it's got a bunch of other stuff on the car. All right, guys, got the uh, Mustang up on jack stands. I'm just going to give you a closer look of what's going on here. So this is the Ford Performance Complete Suspension System. We would take the caliper and rotor assembly off. You'd have to knock the factory splined bolts off and also replace these. It's recommended to replace these. Uh, we're going to disconnect the wiring off the strut body. We're going to disconnect the 18 millimeter sway bar end link. And I'm going to put a jack under the control arm area. All right, guys, we're going to start right now. I'm going to put my 18 millimeter socket on my pneumatic impact gun. Got to get the clip out of the way down here as well because this whole assembly is going to drop down and we don't want to put tension on this line. And without one of these tools, you will go through hell trying to get this off, especially on the bottom one. So we got this safely off right there and uh, that should give us enough tension release to uh, get this off. So we're going to use the uh, 18 millimeter. And then we have a 17 millimeter wrench that we hold it from behind to release the uh, sway bar end link. And that's it. So by having the car up and the suspension unloaded, there's no tension on the sway bar end link, like I show you guys here. And it comes out one, two, three. All right, guys, so I had to pull the strut assembly off the car. Not usually a big deal, but I just wanted to show it to you out of the car. These are the Maxim Motorsports caster camera plates already mounted. You have to make sure when you put these in, this shape of the bottom plate has to go towards the side of the fender. You have to orient this the right way, otherwise you're not going to be able to get the right adjustments. Uh, the instructions are probably online. You guys can find it online, download it, print it out, and have it with you when you're on the side of the car. So I actually had to put a little compression on the spring to get this assembled. And uh, I put some grease on the rubber upper mount and on the lower mount. And now we're going to line it up and uh, get this installed and move on to the other side. So I'm just going to get in closer as I show you guys. See, this is the side of the fender is here, and that's the outer curve of the lower plate. That's how you have to mount it. So snake it in. I use the nuts on the top just to hold it in place while I get the spindle and this attached. Then once I button up the bottom end, I go up on the top and I finish it and we'll turn the camera back on and I'll show you that when we're done. All right guys, got the bottom buttoned up. So what I do, I just finger tighten these and I got the floor jack under the spindle and you're gonna wanna put the new lock nuts and washers on the new Maxim Motorsports camera caster plate. So the orientation of this, you can see the fat wider part goes towards the front of the car. And you just have to snake this out, a little rubber piece here. Throw your washers on there. We're gonna zip this on with the battery powered impact gun. And that's it. So guys, we're going to get this uh, buttoned up and get it over to the alignment rack. And we're going to dial this car uh, back in the spec for the customer so it finally drives right. All done with the install of the Maximum Motorsports camber caster plates. Just want to show you guys, this is the passenger side. This is the orientation of the support brace. The fatter side goes towards the front of the car. The curve goes towards the outside of the fender. And... Uh, when you tighten all these up, 
just use your finger and you can move the strut assembly all around and that's how you know that you're going to get good adjustment now this little ground screw here can interfere with some of your camber but i don't think it's going to affect anything because that's only if you're going to try to bring it positive the bottom plate may hit that so if that does run into an issue you could unscrew this ground screw and drill and tap a hole somewhere else in the shock tower and uh, re relocate that if you have an issue let's go over to the driver's side so this is just to show you guys the proper orientation of how these are going to mount because sometimes uh, the instructions could be confusing to some and uh, I'm going to get a, a glimpse on the driver's side up in there okay so if you guys could see here's the lower plate and the arch is facing towards the front fender towards the side and then you have these little scallop cutouts here and over here and that's there for clearance if like on the other side you have that little uh, ground screw but on the driver's side you don't have any so that was designed for clearance but on the other side if you do run into an issue just remove that screw when you're on the alignment rack and uh, you should be good to go also FYI um, this car was driving absolutely terrible I didn't install the suspension it was done by a shop down in Florida and all of the bolts on the driver's side were loose. What I'm talking about is these splined spindle bolts, the nuts were completely loose on the top and on the bottom, and the actual brake caliper was loose. So that made a lot of sense, because when I drove this car, the steering wheel was constantly going to one side uh, every time I was hitting a bump and I heard some noise. And that's the reason why you're supposed to always use brand new factory OEM hardware and you're supposed to torque it to factory spec so whoever worked on this car uh, prior did not follow instructions because they reused the bolts they smashed the crap out of them over here uh, and I saw that because the threads were a little bit damaged uh, getting them out but like I said spend the 40 or 50 bucks for the new hardware you can get that stuff anywhere from your Ford dealer from CJ Pony Parts from LMR Mustang from Levittown Ford whoever uh, buy the hardware kit and do it right and take your time and uh, you're good to go so we're gonna get the car down on the ground uh, we're gonna strap it up get it over to the alignment rack and uh, we're gonna dial this car back in for this customer and get it driving the way it's supposed to drive so hope you guys uh, got a couple of tips on doing the maximum motorsports camber and caster plates and uh, spend the extra time get the caliper off the rotor off everything in between and uh, you'll get this done in no time so see you guys soon autofanatic at yahoo.com take care